Our life should not be dearer to us than Jesus' life was to him. When Jesus was on this earth, his life was not very dear to him. I'm not saying Jesus was suicidal. I'm not saying Jesus just hated life. Jesus wasn't one of those Debbie the Downer, depressed, walking around, always, always having something negative to say. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. So everything about Jesus was happiness and life. Jesus says, I came to give you life and more abundantly. There was nothing about Jesus that's suicidal or down, yet Jesus did not value his life very dear to him. He always laid it down. Can I ask you a question? Are you valuing your life dearer than Jesus valued his life to him? And Apostle John tells us today, he says that if Jesus did this for us, lay down his life, he says we ought to lay our lives down for our brethren. See, for most of us, we love the message that Jesus came. And we're like, oh my goodness, I just want to give Jesus a little bit more money. Such a great sacrifice. Became like human, died. Man, I just, my love just grows deeper for Jesus. But see, what that is, it's not only so that your love will go deeper for Jesus, but so that you will follow his pattern and so that your commitment to Jesus will go higher. Can somebody say amen? amen. I really want to encourage each one of us. Disciples, martyrs, all the people who brought Christianity to us lived with this motto. If Jesus' life was not dear to him, our life should not be dear to us. If Jesus' life, he laid it down so that I can hear about the gospel, I should lay my life down so other people can hear about Jesus for the glory of God. Can somebody say amen? amen. I want to tell you about a few of these men that Jesus had around him who did some really incredible things for, for God. James, the son of Zebedee and the elder brother of John, was killed by King, by Herod Agrippa. So James is a disciple of Jesus and he ends his life being killed because he followed, laid down his life for Jesus. The second one is Matthew, the tax collector. Most of you know Matthew because Matthew wrote the Gospel of Matthew in Hebrew. He was preaching in Ethiopia when he suffered martyrdom by the sword. I mean Matthew decided that Jesus laying his life down for the world is good. But Jesus is my mentor. I am going to lay my life down also for the world in Ethiopia. James, the brother of Jesus. Somebody said, if you don't believe that Christianity is real, how hard will it take to convince your brother you're God? <laughs> that, is, that is a miracle in itself. And so Jesus had a brother, the half-brother of Jesus. He was a leader of the church and he was the author of the epistle by his name. And this James, at the age of 94, history says that he was beat and stoned and finally had his brains bashed out with the fuller's club. Imagine Jesus' brother who could have said, Jesus died for my sin. This is for free. I don't need to do anything. Then why did he, at 94 years of age, not just keep this faith to himself and live all of his days celebrating, maybe writing a book, that Jesus was my brother. See, most of us think that to believe in Jesus is free, but to follow Jesus costs everything. Most of the time, disciples were shut down and they were said, if you're not going to preach about Jesus, we will not hurt you. But if you talk about Jesus, you will be beaten. And disciples chose not to value their life very dear to them. Matthias was an apostle who filled the vacant place of Judas. He was stoned at Jerusalem and then beheaded. Andrew was the brother of Peter. So Peter had a brother. He was, his name was Andrew. He preached the gospel throughout Asia. Upon his arrival at Edessa, he was arrested and crucified on the cross and the two ends of which were fixed transversely in the ground, which is where we get the term St. Andrew's cross. So this is how Peter's brother, history says, was crucified. Why? Because to Peter's brother, as it was to Peter, they said this, Jesus did not value his life very much to bring salvation. Don't think that Andrew was suicidal. This is not Andrew's dream. I want to be crucified. 
of course not they all wanted to live just like you they all had dreams just like me they all had ambitions just like all of us the only difference between them is they followed a master who laid his life down to save them and they said we cannot he became he was God became man we are men we cannot hold our life to dear that will end anyway we will lay it down as well Peter was condemned to death and was crucified upside down at his own request because he said he was unworthy to be crucified in the same manner as his Lord. Becoming a Christian in those days did not necessarily mean you're not going to have troubles. It just simply means you will have salvation and you also will follow the pattern of Jesus to lay your life down to bring others to Jesus. Jude, the brother of James, was also crucified at this city. Bartholomew, he preached in several countries and translated the gospel of Matthew into the language of India. He was cruelly beaten and then crucified by people there. Thomas, who was the doubting Thomas, he preached the gospel in India where pagan priests martyred him with pin spears and tortured him with red hot plates on his body and finally burned him alive. Philip evangelized at the city where hostile Jews had him tortured and crucified upside down. Simon preached the gospel in the city and in Africa and even in Britain where he was crucified in about 74 AD. John, the beloved disciple who was the brother of James, from Ephesus he was ordered to Rome where he was affirmed to be cast into the boiling oil. He escaped by miracle without injury and then the emperor banished him to the Isle of Patmos where he wrote the book of Revelation. He is the only apostle who escaped violent death. So Jesus had 12 apostles. All 12 followed his pattern. Please understand following Jesus did not mean dying like Jesus it meant living like Jesus and living like Jesus means this you lay your life down for God's call and sometimes it could end good sometimes as we see with 11 it didn't end so good even with John at the last time of his life but there was one more apostle that the church had and this apostle was Judas he was so bestraught by betraying Jesus that he committed suicide. It's interesting that all 12 did not die normal death. Even him who walked away from Jesus. Can I tell you something? We as a church, we as youth group, there's three things you can do with your life. Is you can either waste it, you can either wreck it, or you can lay it down to God. 